Okay, how does this go again? I, uh, I just summon demons. They do all the work for me? <laughs> Sounds different. So what, uh... Hand of Gul'dan? Oh! Three imps! <laughs> Let's see. Uh, build shards again and... Call the stalkers. Ooh, two doggies, and they like to chew on fools. <laughs> That's how I like them. All right, I uh, need a bunch more imps, and um, let's just do two hands of Gul'dan. <laughs> and the tyrant now. Hey, hey! Hey, man! Are you gonna bask in your farts all day, or are you gonna tell them about the talents, gear, covenants, rotations, and more, fool, more! Hand of Gul'dan! All right, all right, enough farting around. <laughs> But really now, if you like our content, our type of guides, and also the podcast and everything that we do, we would really appreciate if you subscribe and enable those notifications. I know, I know you've heard this time and time again, but that's probably because it's actually still important. For some reason, the algorithm just doesn't put videos out to people even if they are subscribed. So just being subscribed sometimes is not enough. Now, and we really do appreciate it because if you do that, then that video, this video in particular, will just be better, it will be pushed to more people, it will grow, and you know, it helps us out, and we appreciate it. Now, transition! On the first row, a good all-rounder is Demonic Strength. This is a 1 minute cooldown burst damage ability. For overall content, this can be the easiest one to use because of a few reasons. One, it aligns with your Tyrant way better, since a playstyle we will be talking about will have your Tyrant's cooldown close to 1 minute, not only giving you more burst every minute or so, but Tyrant also buffs your demonic strength, so they go hand in hand. Two, it works good with the Fell Commando Conduit you will be having, and three, its damage is not tied to your tank, keeping the pack in place, at least not as much as Bile Scourge Bombers will be. Your demon can still slightly move around, so as long as your tank isn't leaping or rolling away, it's gonna be good. It's also, you know, a mostly playstyle choice, but as far as we are concerned, for raids and dungeons, Demonic Strength is what we will be recommending. When fighting in high keys with large packs consistently, Dreadlash will pull ahead of the other two. It has good synergy with the Legendary and Conduit we will mention down the road, but mostly you want to think of this as the big AoE talent option. It has the most damage output on paper, it's a passive so doesn't add too much hassle where your rotation is concerned. For the second row, the all-reliable Demonic Calling is your go-to. Honestly, at this point they should just make this baseline. The DPS benefits of this aside, the fact that it provides an instant cast in an already heavy, hard casting spec makes Demonology feel so much better. Sure, the other options are instant as well, but they add globals to your rotation instead of changing existing ones. Power Siphon will end up with more instants overall in high movement intense fights, but sacrifices imps instead which loses out in AoE because there will be fewer imps to implode and works against the Tyrant build we will be discussing. It doesn't seem to be doing more damage on paper either, so it's mostly something you will weigh against very movement intense fights where you just need more instant cast spells. The third row is a personal preference row. Burning Rush is usually the default option. It adds a burst of speed that consumes your HP as you keep it up. It's good for situations where you need on-demand movement options, but with you potentially playing Night Fae as your Covenant, Soul Shape can most of the times be enough. And when that is the case, or maybe you just don't need or want the extra mobility, then Demon Skin is the tanky alternative. There is a lot of mandatory group damage in this tier, from waves upon waves of raid-wide damage to the prideful affix on top of constant range adds shooting at you regardless of tank threat, being tankier overall has its uses. Next up, some more options. For raids and single target damage output, Vile Fiend will be your best choice. This will synergize with your Tyrant and the last row options, but mostly it's an extra demon to smash your target with. It costs a shard, so it's not really free, but so far seems to be one of the better options on this row for all content. For Mythic Plus specifically, dungeons and all the other stuff, from the Shadows will be another option. 
especially when you will go for the full Dreadstalker build. I'm talking Conduit and Legendary as well, but more on that later. There's nothing stopping you in using Vilefiend in Keys. If anything, the bonus Vilefiend adds by itself and into the Tyrant, rivals from the Shadows. God knows, Tyrannical Weeks are a bitch. But numbers are numbers, and over the course of a key, from the Shadows can contribute more to your overall damage, which we know it's more important than having an actual personality. It works good with Dreadlash and one of the legendaries we will be recommending. The fifth row is mostly a utility row. The choice mainly revolves on you actually making good use of it. Standardly, you can go with Mortal Coil. It's an instant cast, fear that cannot be broken, which more importantly comes back to heal you for 20% of your HP. The heal is probably what you could be using it most with, especially in pugs where your healer is not someone you can communicate with. The CC is also strong enough and if used properly, aka don't fear the target into another pack of mobs, will stop any cast so long as the target can be feared and from there on the uses of it will differ from encounter to encounter and based on your creativity. Hall of Terror was brought back this expansion and is almost the same thing but in AoE. The catch is you have to be in close range of your target since it's AoE and it's around you, and it disorients them, meaning the CC can be broken. Granted, you would be using this one to stop casts in AoE fashion, but if you are in a pre-made group where your buds can stop DPSing, the utility of this can be way higher, although in practice uh, we would still recommend Mortal Coil. For the 6th talent row, Grimoire Felguard will be an all-rounder once again. Mostly because it adds a window of burst damage and you can align it with your turn for some serious burst. Not only does it feed your turn for single target burst with demonic consumption, but it's also great for AoE burst as well. Burst, 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 burst. Although when I sim it against its other option, it loses out. The burst damage playstyle will still be better and preferred than the consistent damage output, which Soul Conduits can offer, but not really. Just think of Soul Conduit as an alternative, a bit more RNG, but less to worry about, I suppose, in terms of rotation. It will give you a smoother rotation when it procs, although whenever that procs, reducing the amount of Shadow Bolts you will be casting. It seems higher than Grimoire, but other than that, it's unimpressive. The damage is there, but once again, raid bosses have certain phases where they take extra damage or phases where they don't take any damage at all, dungeons have downtime in between packs, where nothing happened. All of these essentially mean that something which gives you the best result if you are non-stop in combat will not win out and why we will recommend you take Grimoire on this row. Lastly, Demonic Consumption is the name of the game, for the same burst versus sustain options we talked about before. Sadly, all of the talents on this row offer only single target damage buffs, more or less. Demonic Consumption changed from its previous iteration where your talent will gain strength based on a percentage of the total HP of your already summoned demons. Meaning the more demons you have out, the more damage you will have. AKA your imps and dogs, your vile fiend and grimoire all contribute, meaning that all talents that give you extra dudes work especially well with this to give you big fat tyrants every minute and a half or less depending on your lego. So every minute and a half you will melt the face of some poor bastard. Since your demon's health scales with your HP as well, means that HP boosts affect this cooldown. This has created some cute playstyles where you would stack HP effect, but then again, that needs to be done carefully and not something we recommend. It's good to know, it's there though, but you know, needs some coordination. Stats. What to equip, what to farm, the age old question in an RPG. Well, you may have heard of how the game evolved to the point where the only real way to know what the best item to equip is, is the sim. And it's true, and also not that difficult. You simply go to raidboss.com and choose the options you are actually looking for. What you might also need is the simulation craft add-on to fetch all your character data that you will be using for raidbots. And the main reason we say this is because this is really the best answer you will ever get when looking to understand what gear piece to equip. Outside of that, I know not everyone is keen with using third-party software to get their deeds. There is still a stat priority you can follow as a reference. You won't lose too much damage by using it as a guide to gear up anyway. At the top, as always, probably for one more patch as well, is Intellect. 
raw intellect will outweigh anything else while the gearing is just starting as far as the expansion is concerned. This means that the higher eye level piece will always be the better choice to make. After that it's haste as your best secondary stat with mastery crit and verse pretty close to each other, depending on how much you have of each. Haste and mastery is not a bad combo to go for but too much mastery will make crit start to be way better so you know keeping a balance between them will probably be for the best. And also don't forget about the diminishing returns at around 30 to 35 percent ish. As such, we will be recommending a haste focused set of consumables, but if you do sim another stat to be best or better for you, feel free to replace haste with it. For your weapon though, go with Celestial Guidance, because the intellect proc should be pretty self-explanatory. Use eternal stats for your chest with an added heavy desolate armor kit for that extra stamina, because well, stamina indirectly buffs your damage as well. For the Bracers, get Eternal Intellect and finish up with a Fortified Avoidance. The Cloak Enchant helps with overall trickles of AoE damage in all content for the most amount of damage reduction, but each Cloak Enchant does something different. You can just choose your poison, I suppose. For the easier to replace consumables, the Quick Jewel Cluster Gems will be your sockets of choice, while the Tenet of Haste will go nicely on your rings. For the potions, the Phantom Fire one will go well for any and all single target scenarios, while the Potion of Spectral Intellect will start to pull ahead when fighting more than two targets at once. You will go with the Spectral Flask of Power, of course, and use the Shadow Core Oil for your weapon, which will go even better with the Phantom Fire potions since they synergize really well. For the food, ideally you want to always go with the Feast, which usually happens in raids more often than not, but if that's not possible or you are running dungeons, the Tenebrous Crown Roast Aspect will be the next best thing cause haste. Or you know, simply replace any with a stat of your choice. There are currently two covenants good for demonology, seeming fairly close to each other. Necrolord is one of the least popular ones, with Emony being arguably the better of the options, especially with Lead by Example that is a buff to your group as well, giving you an indirect contribution to your overall damage output within that group by buffing everyone's main stat every time you use Decimating Bolt. You can build Emony with the double potency route if your choice will be Necrolords in the end, but realistically Night Fae will be your best bet, Soul Rot is nothing impressive and similar to the other two specs, its main purpose is to activate Nia's Grove Invigoration trait to buff your mastery and HP. And yes, Nia is arguably the best soulbind in both single target and AoE. Although on many specs, Nia's tool's burrs is one of the best traits, for demonology you really want the double potency path to be unlocked. That will give you Nia's tool's poison instead, which can be better when the target cannot stay in one spot or when you are fighting more than one target, not because the poison is better in AoE than burst, but because the second potency will start to win out in a large and chaotic enough fight. Crane is another soulbind you might see, at least on Warcraft logs, and although it's a good option for a lot of Night Fate DPSers, it doesn't really suit the demonology design too much, Nia still being the better option. And if you want to keep it simpler for the beginning part, Dreamweaver is a good option as well, with Field of Blossoms for the extra haste at least in dungeons. Dreamweaver is actually fairly close to Nia in Mythic Plus scenarios, but the latter will win out convincingly in raids. Similarly, in raids, Nia, Dreamweaver and Emony sim less than a percentage of damage apart, at least for me, and it might not stay consistent, but the difference is clearly not large enough where one would clearly be way superior than the other, although in all situations Night Fae wins even by a decimal. We will recommend Night Fae and Nia as a result, but feel free to play with all of them, at least in Mythic Plus scenarios, and see which suits your playstyle more. As for the potency conduits themselves, the best one is Born of Blood, which you want at all times, regardless of content. Usually the second best is Fel Commando that can be paired with Born and could be your default setup. Or you can go with Carnivorous Stalkers in Dungeons for that Dreadstalkers build I mentioned earlier. To be completed with the legendary as well. Tyrant Soul is not great but it's not too bad either, it seems good for me in single target but we will recommend one of the two potency combinations we just mentioned earlier. For the endurance options go with Diabolical Bloodstone and Resolute Barrier 
while for the finesse, demonic momentum and fell celerity will be the better options. These are mostly playstyle related, so feel free to choose the ones you can most put to good use. Although the same simming rule applies to trinkets, there are a few good ones. Ideally, you want trinkets that can align with your tyrant if we are talking on use effect. Inscrutable Quantum Device has a 3 minute cooldown, meaning baseline it will align with every other tyrant or with every third tyrant if you are playing the Wilfred Legendary. Soul Letting Ruby is another good option to aim for. If you can raid, the Cabalist Imnal Trinket, especially if more people in your group have it, is a good option. Or you can go simple with passive trinkets like the Sinful Gladiator's Insignia of Alacrity and the Infinitely Divisible Ooze, which both can be upgraded through either PvP, Honor Points or Dungeon Valor Points. Same thing with the other first two. Inscrutable Quantum Device though has an RNG proc when it comes to what it will actually do. And you might want a weak aura for it if you don't want to just roll the dice on what buff you'll be getting. A noteworthy mention is the Sinful Gladiator's Emblem from PvP. This gives you a massive HP boost which in turn translates into your demons having more health and that will give your tyrant more damage. It's a weird mindset but yeah that's the scaling of demonology in part. Right now there are two main legendaries that demonology can put to good use, although other people seem to be pushing high content with more than just these two. Wilfred's Sigil of Superior Summoning will be a good all rounder, performing amazing both in raiding scenarios but also in Mythic Plus. It reduces the cooldown of your tyrant every time you spend shards and it can get to a few seconds shy of a minute cooldown if you'll be consistently in combat during that time. The Tyrant is a single target cooldown, but the demons it buffs are indeed good in cleave. Dreadbite can cleave from Dreadstalkers, and your Felguard will cleave with Felstrom and Demonic Strength, so the damage translates into scenarios of AoE nature. But for the mathematical best choice, and one that can make your Tyrant align better with some other trinkets, go with the Grim Inquisitor's Dread Calling. This will be your AoE option of choice, particularly for heavy and consistent AoE. This will almost make the talents Dreadlash and From the Shadows mandatory for that Call Dreadstalker synergy and actual AoE damage output with small bursts every time you let the dogs out. Oof, oof. You open by precasting Demon Bolt, and if you are Night Fae and you went with Nia, pop Soul Rot. Use Grimoire Felguard, use Vilefind. Cast Shadow Ball twice, then cast Dreadstalkers, Shadow Ball twice again, Hand of Gul'dan, Shadow Bolt again, another Hand of Gul'dan, then use Demonic Tyrant. Pop Demonic Strength last. And, uh, the purpose of this is to have two sets of imps and all of the buffs from Grove Invigoration activated by Soul Rot, aka Mastery and HP. Now I didn't mention the HP part because it's a wonky mechanic. Your demons scale off of your HP, clearly. And the money consumption makes it so your tyrant is stronger the more HP it can suck from your demons. So every HP buff you have, be it from soul binds, trinkets, or external cooldowns of your group, will count towards your tyrant's damage. To know when it's better to choose between stamina and other stats as a damage option requires some finesse and intense simming if you want to make sure you are choosing the right option. The opener can be more or less thought of as how to also use your cooldowns. Outside of that, you want to cast Dreadstalkers whenever available, spend shards on Hands of Gul'dan when you are at 4 or 5 total shards, use Demon Bolt if you have 2 or more Demonic Core charges, Hand of Gul'dan next if only at 3 shards, otherwise just use Shadow Bolts to generate shards and obviously never cap on shards. Assuming you would be using Wolfrids in single target, you really want to save both Vile Fiend and Grimoire for the Tyrant only, attempting to cast them similarly to the opener. This is an ideal scenario because fights can last for different periods of times and if by saving either of them for your tyrant means you would be losing a full cast overall over the course of the fight, then it's better to actually use them on cooldown, which is probably the attitude you want to have at the beginning until you get used to all the timings. Demonic Strength is also a good fit in after the tyrant is popped so your Felgar can do max damage with the skill. The rotational priority doesn't change too much. If you don't use the Wilfred Legendary, you may want to cast Vile Fiend on cooldown. The Grimoire Felguard ability is debatable. You can either save it for a big tyrant by delaying it one minute every time, supposing you would have it every second tyrant, 
or you can use it on cooldown if priority damage is necessary aka there's a lieutenant mob that needs to go down fast and your grimoire is ready but your tyrant still has a minute left other than that the only other noteworthy topic to discuss is implosion and there are two situations the basic one if you are running vile fiend is to use implosion every two to three hands of guldan to minimize the amount of implosion casts you do while maximizing the imp's damage overall before they get to expire. The timing is usually based on haste, so you can either track the lifespan of your imps and implode just before they expire, or safely implode after every second hand of Gul'dan. Either way, keep in mind that after you use hand, the imps take about a second to spawn, meaning your next global after hand of Gul'dan cannot be implode or you will eat up all of your imps except the ones you just summoned. From your newly casted hand of Gul'dan, of course. The second thing to keep in mind is if you are running from the shadows and dreadlash, this changes a bit. What this combo does is your stalkers no longer bite your one target, but bite in AoE thanks to dreadlash and apply the damage taken debuff in AoE thanks to from the shadows. This damage taken debuff is applied to implosion as well, meaning big fucking damn. So realistically, you want to be on full shards after you use Call Dread Stalkers to have the most amount of time to fit in two total implosions in the debuff window. Whether each implosion will be of two hands or three hands of Gul'dan, it depends on your haste. Other than this, it's mostly cooldown management. You can just press all shit as it's available, then risking keeping it off cooldown for too long because you don't really know when to do it. Or time everything with your Tyrant. Essentially, with enough practice, you will get the hang of it, and the issues are mostly in dungeons, since the single boss fight is a bit more straightforward. Mm, usually. Big shout out to Motoko and Not for their online guides on Icy Veins and Wowhead that you can find on the Warlock Discord. And of course, Not for also providing us with feedback necessary to get demo. It wasn't easy. Demo has been one of the hardest to research for us so far, and we highly recommend you guys check the Council of the Black Harvest discord channel for more in-depth info about the spec thank you to the patrons for supporting our channel time and time again we are really grateful for you guys and if you're dear viewer like to support us a little bit more if you like our content and everything that we do with the streams and everything check the link down below to our patreon page thank you for watching the video and see you next time I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.